the Lord is a God who's taking us forward and I'm not looking to go backwards in any way. We're going on in the name of the Lord. Amen. Open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25. We have sort of switched gears in our discussion of strongholds. We were talking first about pulling down strongholds and getting rid of the strongholds that are troublesome to us in our personal lives, in our ministry lives, and in our business lives. And now we are turning our attention to living in strongholds. When David took down the Jebusites from that stronghold, the Bible says David then dwelt in the stronghold. He moved his residence to the place that had been the stronghold of the enemy and named it after himself, called the city of David, and he dwelt in the stronghold. So now we've been talking about living in strongholds, taking this temple that we dwell in and our family, our household, um, our businesses, to turn them into strongholds that are places that the enemy cannot penetrate, that the enemy does not have access to, that the enemy is uh, away from our dwelling place. And so here in Proverbs 25, 28, uh, we'll continue with this theme of living in strongholds. The Bible says here in 25, 28, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Amen. On Wednesday night we began talking about this, laid a foundation for it, um, and I, I want to continue on that today. Um, we have to determine in our in our walk with the Lord whether um, our temple and our uh, assignment and, and, and our walk in the Lord, uh, whether it is a stronghold or it's a place of easy and regular defeat by the enemy. In other words, if they had a city that was on the hill like Jerusalem had been, that the Jebusites had inhabited for 400 years, the Jews could not impregnate that place. They could not go through the walls. They could not take down the enemy there. Um, we live uh, sometimes, uh, some of us come to the Lord as a child, some in our teens, some in our 20s and 30s and 40s. And we have to begin to look at our assignment and our walk with the Lord, that, that if I walk with the Lord for 40 years or 50 years, during that 40 or 50 years, and am I set up in a stronghold where I'm, I'm hedged about in such a way that the enemy for 40 years has been unable to penetrate the walls of my fortress? For 40 years or 20 years, every day when I get up and we walk and we enjoy our life as a family, um, how many, is this a, as an old folks, you see, just another day? That the Lord has kept me. Uh, when we, we, we look up and then we realize that the enemy didn't win again today. He came at me every kind of way. He tried to get in. He tried to come through that door. He tried to come up this way. But when I wake up the next day, I can say, just another day that the Lord has kept me. Oh, come on, old folks, you see, uh, uh, kept me with my mind, stay on Jesus. Just another day that the Lord. Oh, it wasn't a testimony service that we passed in church that some old mother didn't get up and say, Just another day that the Lord has kept me. Oh, come on. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. He has kept me from all evil with my mind. Stay on Jesus just another day that the Lord has kept me. Oh, come on, y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. Just another day 
saw that we need to be able to say that. And the, 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 the writer here in, in Proverbs says that if you're going to stay in that kind of place, uh, one of the essential ingredients is that you're going to have to get control or rule over your own spirit. Amen. Your own spirit. So we started talking on Wednesday about the, the, the makeup of us as people, as, as human beings, that we are tripartite, three-part, three-part beings. We are spirit, soul, and we live in a body. Three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Why do every figure stuck there in Proverbs? I want you to go over into 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And as, as, the, as Paul closes this first epistle to the church in Thessalonica, he says a lot of good stuff. Um, and starting at verse 14, he says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those that are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak. This is 1 Thessalonians 5, 15. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Then verse 23 is the one I want you to see for today. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So his prayer is that the God of peace himself would sanctify you, set you apart, Completely, that, that, that the whole thing of you would be set apart completely. Your whole spirit, your whole soul, your whole body be preserved or kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that it is possible for us to, you know, call ourselves sanctified folks, set apart for divine purposes. But it's possible that, that as sanctified, quote, people, uh, we used to put growing up, you know, I mean, sometimes people say that we put too much emphasis on our externals. Uh, you know, uh, women were dressed a certain way, men were dressed a certain way. We looked holy. We looked holy. <laughs> 